Okay. Hi. Happy Saturday. Well, okay. So I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but I was a little bit too frustrated to actually get on camera and talk about it. So that's why I didn't do it. I would have though, but it just, so I bas I unpacked this with like some of my colleagues today and yeah, here's the thing and here's the lesson, okay? It is really important for women, women to start prioritizing their maintenance. Now, I saw a film, uh, Poor Things, so this, it was going to be a film review yesterday on poor things, but then as I was coming out of the theater, something happened and I'm kind of going to go into what happened, but even more than that, I'm going to go into like what I learned from it because I feel like you could actually learn from this. Men or women could learn from this, but, um, here's the thing. Every person who's alive in America okay like you kind of have a responsibility to either take care of yourself or get into a situation where there's someone to take care of you i feel like many people who are coming here from the developed being world are going by norms and standards that exist in the developing world as in families are supposed to take care of their their children and like that's a nice idea except things actually cost money here. Like utilities cost money. Things are expensive. In the developing world, things aren't as expensive. I'm not saying the major thing that people have to focus on is like, um, it's food. Food and water are things that people are trying to, you know, be able to afford kind of, but even most people aren't living in the city. Most people are living in like rural, rural farming area where like it's like a whole community is struggling from famine not it's not like one person in america you actually have the opportunity to just work and then just not be impoverished anymore like that's a real opportunity are you breaking my things brew fucking cat um okay so I, ugh, how can I say this? I realized that I was giving too much and I was requiring too little. And initially I was trying to sum this up like, oh, let me see what other people are bringing to the table. Let me see what other people are bringing to the table. And then what I realized after taking some time away, and I keep talking about this in this way where, oh no, 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 no. Do you need to go? Do you need to go? Don't do it. Okay. Um, Sorry, I kept talking about, um, I kept talking about uh, the ways that I kept assuming people were going to basically understand my worth. And I keep saying that, like, oh, I tried this and I tried that and I tried this. And here's what I realized after taking, no, I'm sorry, I was going to tell you that I was taking time away. I kept trying to take time away. I kind of ran to the south because I needed time away from like the big city um mostly because like all of my family was there and I I needed to get away and unfortunately I didn't see that many people with like road maps telling you like how to escape the madness of a city but I really feel like some some girls and I think some girls are smart if they do this if they grew up in a really big town like a New York or a San Francisco or in LA if they go to school at like the University of Alabama or come to like Vanderbilt or something where it's like a lot, the pace of the place is a lot slower. And there are just so many other people whose norm is like way small, is it's just slower and more behind. It helps you establish these like baselines um, that are useful for longevity. I'll say that cause that's like a pretty good way to put it, but there's other things that I mean when I say that, but we'll just start by saying that. Now, you might kind of be like, so, like, what is the... Oh, that's what he's doing. 
So what does this have to do with like um, other other people's view on you? Because that's where I was going with this. I realized after taking time away, I thought that I had all of these things to prove to other people. Like I had to do this and do that and do this and do that and then record all the things and then show everyone all the things and then they would finally realize that I'm great. And the thing I didn't realize is like the people were approaching me and people were befriending me and people were liking me and they knew shit about me that I didn't tell them. I didn't share with them. They knew who I was because of who I was. Who I am. They knew, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like um, <clears throat> I had to do all of these extra things in order for them to be like, wow, she's great. Like me being who I am, who I was, made them be like, oh my God, she's great. And some people didn't even know like a lot of my like accomplishments. They just liked me because of like my beauty or something or my, my friendliness. And that that is very interesting because those are things I guess I didn't even see worth in. Now what I'm saying is like, your story isn't going to be the same as mine, obviously. But as we're going into 2024, I want to be like one person who's literally saying to you, like, all, all of the minutes in your life cost money and time. And let's take beauty or aesthetics out of this, right? Like, everything you do is costing somebody money. Somebody. And you should realize this. I know there's this like popular motive that or this idea that like so many black people are living off of like government assistance. Like as a person who doesn't get any government assistance at all, like I mean I know the do you know, I work every day and I, I well not every day, but I work a lot. And also I'm surrounded by women who also work a lot, like and we pay for things, you know what I'm saying? And things cost money. And so like our time is worth money. And I think that's something maybe that, that a lot of women don't realize. And I thought it was very interesting in the movie Poor Things, <clears throat> the main character, um, she's kind of like raised up. She's very naive. And it ended up being a lot about like lust in a sense where she basically found out how to masturbate. And that ended up being the thing that was that had dri driven her like her lustfulness drew her to a relationship with a guy, the guy starts taking her all over the world a little kind of and then this is where things get funny so she she meets another guy and a woman a woman and a guy who are friends on this uh cruise that he takes her on and one of the guys is like i'm gonna show you the real world now i think this is very interesting so what he shows her is how they're on this boat and then the boat stops at like <clears throat> kind of a little island and like all the way down this little pyramid and steps and all these things are all of these like poor people who are they're like naked and poor and they're just like sitting on the sand they're just sitting on the sand and there are a bunch of dead babies who are like being they're trying to kind of bury them in the sand and they just kind of like watch them there's nothing to do right because like there's no food, there's no water, there's no infrastructure, like no one is going to give them any resources really, it feels like. So they're just kind of like sitting around with nothing and then their babies are actually dying. And we also know this to be true, like we can watch what's happening in the Gaza Strip, right, with Palestinians. This is happening, this is also happening in Ethiopia. Like this is also happening in Yemen. I mean, there's all type of places all over the world where this is actually happening, but for real. Um, there are babies dying right now. Like today, I, I just snapped my fingers three times. There are probably like 30 babies who just died of, of starvation, like just now. I didn't save any of those babies, did you? They still died, and they were unfortunately going to. But where they died, other babies will be born. Now, kind of the way that this little cycle has been working is that unfortunately every all those snaps tend to be babies of color black babies babies in africa but with like the, the ukrainian war now these are like ukrainian babies white babies um palestinian babies i guess these are what arab babies or whatever we want to call them now there's multi it's a multicultural race to death 
And this guy, Harry, who's the, who's the guy who points this out to, to the girl in the movie, he was trying to teach her a lesson and show her the real world. It's like, honey, people are dying. For real. They are. And they're going to die. More of them. And, like, you're not going to save them. Anyway, so what she does is she goes back um, to the guy that she's living with. And he, he's, I guess he's gambled and he's won a bunch of money. Um, so she gathers up all the money while he's, like, sloppy drunk, just passed out in the hotel room or something. She gathers all the money and she goes to give it to the guys who are at, like, the corridor entrance. And she's like, I want you to go give this to the poor people down there because they need money to live because money is like the root of all the problems so now this will solve their problems now obviously that isn't the truth it might help some people but the people who are working the door they clearly steal the money (laughs) they had no intent to give it to the other poor people and it was a lot of money and it just so happens to be all of the wealth that this guy who was in the hotel room had and so basically the people from the boat tell them, I don't think you have enough money to continue on with the cruise, so we're going to let you off at the next stop. And she's given away all the money. So then they basically get off in Paris, and long story short, this girl ends up figuring out very quickly that she could prostitute herself to make money. Um, and she kind of, like, does that. And the guy gets so upset. Like, so she, she, I guess she sleeps with like one guy, gets money from the, some guy who was like the owner of the whorehouse or something. She sleeps with him. She gets the money. She comes back with food and money. And then she's like, oh, yeah, um, I figured out a way for us to get money. She tells him that she'd like hoard herself. And he's so upset. He's like, Oh my God, you're less than human. You're ugly. You're foul. And then she kind of goes in this rant that I think is very interesting. He says to her, like, you ugly, foul, despicable person. You demon. You demon. And she's like, this doesn't make any sense because you've been calling me beautiful, like so beautiful for so long. So how is it that my physical appearance has now changed because of my um, promiscuity? or whatever, or my whoreness. That's kind of what she says. And I thought that was a very interesting point. You kind of hear a lot of men who are doing this over and over and over again. If everyone is on the same playing field, right, and no one has done anything, then all of a sudden we have, like, um, a society of women who are all chast because, like, no one has done anything yet. And then you can start to have conversations about beauty. But as soon as, like, people or women uh, specifically start to have sex lives, now... Now the women with the sex lives are no longer beautiful. Their beauty has diminished, and now they're just dirty. Because to some men, beauty and chastity are the same thing. So I suppose, like, the ugliest woman, as long as she is pure, she is beautiful. We're not all saying the same thing. I thought this was interesting, too, and this is kind of another conversation I wanted to save for a longer day. But there's this, like, really fat woman on youtube i guess and she's talking about how she had a date with like a a millionaire son a billionaire son or something and i've like i don't know another way to put it but like women in the developed world have a lot of privilege they just do they have so much privilege and like this woman is like just not attractive at all in terms of like what my beauty standards are She doesn't have any of it. She has, like, she's, like, the ice spice type of woman, but she's actually, like, morbidly obese. And there are people who are, like, so attracted to this. Clearly, right? And it's just, like, that those people exist. Those people have money. They have resources. They are going to, like, do things in the world. And all I'm saying is, like, I just think it's useful for us to understand that those people occupy space. They are using words that, like, you and I are using, but they're not saying the same thing. Like, they don't have the same meaning. Like, when we're talking about things that are beautiful and aesthetically pleasing, we're not talking about things that include them. Like, being morbidly obese is not simply unattractive because you have an extreme level of, like, additional body fat. 
it's also super unattractive because you're committing like a gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins you're literally saying you have no self-control Or you're actually sick, and like sickness is not something to be like praised. So if you don't like people with like cardiac arrest, or you don't like people with diabetes, or you don't like really people with any disease, then how is it that you're sitting up here like condoning and praising a morbidly obese women? Be serious. Just an additional part of that seriousness is there's only so many women in the world. So I just think it's funny because for some reason there's this push, especially in the black community. It's like beautiful women, so many men are calling beautiful women ugly. Or some people seem to think that like my poofy hairstyle is going to prevent me from, is going to be the, the deterrent to, for men to be like, oh my God, she's not attractive. I've gone out bald and pulled like just as many men as I have with like, any hairstyle i've gone through all the hairstyles and all the hairstyles and none of it has like either <laughs> increased or decreased my ability to attract men who i want to attract that's just the reality i guess my point is this like Sometimes people that you don't, you need to have standards for yourself. And when I say that, I don't even mean very high standards. I mean, like, you just need to be realistic. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you need to have a place to sleep. You need to have, like, a cell phone, probably a laptop. Um, those need to be, like, baselines, right? And I think that if you have figured that out for your, and I, I also think that you need to be able to get all of that without sex. So let's put a condition on it. Like you need to be, figure out a way to live in the world where you get all of those things without sex. Unless this is someone that you're married to. If you're married to someone, okay, well you maybe have sex with the person you're married to, but figure out a way to get like food, housing, shelter, um, transportation, three meals a day, okay? and go to work and do that without sex. I think we are just in a space in society where you can go beyond sex work. I just, I believe in you. Not, I don't think any sex workers watch this channel anyway, but I'm just saying like, yeah, I burnt the shit out of my cup, so that's what happened. <laughs> 